I was about 12 or 13 years old. I was living in California in uh, Canyon Country. And uh, um, late at night, somewhere between, I don't know, 9, 10 o'clock at night, it seemed to occur at night. Um, I just have a problem going to the bathroom. It, uh, I just wasn't able to urinate, although I had the strong urge to urinate. Uh, at the time, my dad was working construction and didn't have health insurance, so we'd kind of ride it out, I guess, and you know, it would last until probably anywhere from four to six in the morning. Once I was able to uh, urinate again, you know, we incorrectly would assume that whatever the problem was was over, and then we press on. We did go see a, a, um, a pediatrician, but he was unsure what it was and thought maybe it was more of a uh, um, like a bladder inflection or something like that. So he'd give me pills for that, and uh, obviously, you know, by then it was already it had already passed. So we assumed that that's what it was. Um, well, as I got a little bit older, um, probably when I was about 17 or 18, uh, I, I got r really bad and I couldn't handle the pain anymore. So uh, we actually went to uh, the hospital um, and went to the emergency room probably about 10 or 11 o'clock at night. And uh, uh, at that time, they were unsure what it was. They just you know, couldn't urinate. So they, gave, they catheterized me. And uh, obviously that was able to clear the bladder, clear the immediate pain. Um, I joined the military, I had insurance. While I was in the military for the four years, I had only had one episode, so it wasn't a repeat problem. And I assumed that whatever I was doing or however I was living my life was right and didn't have the problem. Once I got out of the military, I would move to Las Vegas. And while I was here, I was 20... About 27, 28, and uh, I had another episode. And at that time, the ER doctor uh, uh, told me, you know what, I, you're a little bit young for it, but I think that you might have a stricter. And that was the first time that I'd ever had a doctor tell me that. I went to a urologist here in, in town, and uh, he basically said that the ER doctor didn't know what he was talking about, that I was too young for that. And it was kidney stones went on with that treatment. That same year, or actually about a year later, uh, I went down to California. It was about 29 at the time. And I ended up back in the original ER that I'd been in before. At that time, uh, I went in and uh, the ER doctor was like, you know what, this is very unusual. And he called in a urologist. That urologist... Uh, tried to uh, uh, place a catheter because they were unable to do it in the hospital to re uh, alleviate the pressure from my bladder. And actually he got down to the point where he had to use, I believe the terminology is guide wires. And for people that don't know what they are, they look like piano wire and they run that through the urethra to open up. Well, he ran into a blockage. He was able to finally get it into the uh, bladder, but when it did, uh, most of what I urinated was blood and at that time he decided we'd have to do some emergency surgery. He went in and tried to property catheterize and was unable to so he actually had to place in a suprapubic. A suprapubic basically is, is a catheter that instead of going through the urethra is actually placed through the wall of the stomach or through the, through the stomach muscles into the bladder and so I actually have scar, to, or I have scar about two inches below my, my belly button. He put that in because he was unable, he said that there was too much, uh, um, it was too irritated and inf inflammated and he was unable to, uh, to proceed safely. So he recommended when I got back to Las Vegas that I saw my, my urologist, which I did. We went in and my outpatient ter surgery turned into a two week stay in the hospital. Um, along with uh, three months off of work so, because he had to place a second to, uh, actually he was able to place a catheter but when he did uh, I'm not exactly sure what blood vessels or what he uh, what he cut but I ended up with bruising all the way around from my abdomen all the way around to the back of my buttocks 
and ended up having a blood transfusion. Well, obviously it was supposed to be outpatient surgery, so I was a little shocked when I woke up uh, uh, with thermal heating blankets on and a, and a morphine drip, and then having to stay in the hospital for two weeks and, and taking three months off of work. Um, he told me, he had made the comment that, you know, maybe I tried a little too hard, and I'm just not really the suing type, so I kind of left it at that and thought that, you know what, he tried to do something and what he believed was in my best interests and it didn't work out and sometimes, you know, there's mistakes made. Um, but during that time, uh, I went from having normal urine flow to having almost no flow, which obviously was a problem after the uh, catheter, had, uh, the suprapubic had been removed. And, um, I also had some continuity problems where I would just get a drip that was uncontrollable. So not making the best medical decision I've ever made, I went back to him and he and explained my problems and he decided to place a stent, which the stent option is not, from my understanding and I'm talking to other urologists, the, the stent option was not an incorrect option, but a lot of urologists don't have other options like reconstructive surgery like Dr. Gelman. Um, the, so th right now the standard practice, instead of repairing the damage, is just to put basically a patch over it. The stent, I've seen it in uh, x-rays and it basically looks like a slinky. They place in a piece of, I believe it's titanium, it's some kind of surgical grade titanium. It looks like a spring and they extend it out and it stretches out, it dilates that area, the skin grows around it, and then it, in theory, leaves you a, 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 a hollow or opening or tube so that you can urinate correct or properly. However, the, uh, the injury that I had or the, the stricture that I had was pretty aggressive and it actually started uh, growing through the stent itself to the point that I'd have to have dilation. But this time, I'd come to the conclusion that he was not the doctor for me and I went to see another doctor in town. I saw him for about two years which put me to somewhere around 30, maybe 31, maybe a little bit later than that. And once every year, year and a half, I'd have to go in and have that area dilated. A week before I joined the police department, I noticed I was having some problems, so to make sure that I didn't miss out on any training, I went and had the surgery done one last time by him. Uh, and then while I was in the academy, I noticed that I was starting to have uh, urination problems where the flow just wasn't where it should be. Got all the way through field training, and about a month and a half, two months later, I went back in, and this time I went into a different doctor uh, who actually referred me to Dr. Gelman at a later time and told him what was going on. He went in and he did a dilation. He realized that this was a more serious problem than, than he was able to handle and he referred me to Dr. Gelman. And, and uh, luckily for me, he's a doctor that knows what he, what he is capable of and, uh, and didn't have the ego to say, well, I'm gonna try this. He referred me to uh, Dr. Gelman. When I, when I originally, when, when, my, when my urologist originally uh, told me that I was going to have to go see a specialist, he made the comment that, that there's very few people that are even capable of doing the surgery. If I remember correctly, he made the comment there were two on the, two on the, the West Coast, Dr. Gelman and another doctor who I can't remember his name, one or two back east and then maybe one or two overseas. So maybe five or six people in the world that could do the surgery that, that Dr. Gelman's capable of doing. Uh, I Obviously, I didn't want to just you know, go to one surgeon and, and not have any other input. So I called Dr. Gelman and I called another gentleman. The, the doctor was unable to make contact with, uh, didn't call back. Dr. Gelman's office immediately called back. They were very helpful uh, with explaining the procedures to my wife who works in the medical field and, uh, and working with us in, in explaining the process that we go through. After talking to him, I actually went down to his office and I met with him 
probably about two weeks later. And that's when we started with the initial consultation. And during that consultation, uh, Dr. Gelman spent about an hour, hour and a half explaining the procedure, showing me, um, showing me other successful examples that he that he had um, w uh, through X-ray before and after pictures uh, of uh, urethras. So that he not only could he show me where my damage was, he was able to show me what a, a normal functioning urethra looked like uh, under x-ray. He was also able to show me uh, people that had extensive damage and repairs and what the surgery looked like, what, that, what the uh, reconstructed urethra looked like after the surgery. Uh, we went in, we did x-rays. Dr. Gelman does his own x-rays. Uh, obviously he has an x-ray technician there, but he does all the procedure with you. He doesn't just hand you off to a tech. Uh, so that you know you can further ask more questions and to make sure that it, it's done correct correctly um, after we after we uh, did the initial consultation he showed me the damage to my own urethra and what his expectations were like I said he said that it was going to be extremely difficult due to close proximity of the original stent but he was confident that he could he could uh, um, reconstruct successfully reconstruct and replace the, the damaged uh, urethra. So I decided to go through with reconstructive surgery, which is probably the best decision I've made in my life. Uh, Dr. Gelman explained that it was going to be a long surgery. It took eight hours. When I was done, I was, uh, he told me I had to have a minimum of five days bed rest where I wasn't able to move, or able to, uh, uh, move around. So uh, when I woke up, there was no pain. I had had no blood transfusion. Uh, during my five day stay at the hospital, I took one Valium. I had no pain, uh, everything healed up nicely, and I haven't had any more problems with uh, um, urination uh, stoppage or anything like that. Since then, I have had to have um, kidney stones removed. I've passed several kidney stones and I've actually had to have two surgically removed. During that time, um, my, my doctor here has obviously made comment about the, uh, about the surgery, about the reconstructive surgery that Dr. Gelman did. And he, he says there's no signs of stricture, there's no signs of closure, uh, there's no signs of weakness in the areas that, uh, um, that the surgery had taken place or at any of the connections between, you know, uh, the connection points between my original urethra and, and the reconstructed area. And very pleased with it. Like I said, it was probably the best decision I made medically in my life. Uh, Dr. Gelman, not only was he, uh, uh, he talked to me and explained procedures, he uh, um, had very a very gentle touch in surgery is probably the only way that I can explain it. I've never been into surgery and come out where I've needed no pain medications and like the only pain that I had or, or discomfort, not even real pain, was in my mouth where they used uh, the lining of the mouth to reconstruct the urethra. After surgery, we uh, um, he made sure, you know, he followed up. I came back several times to make sure that everything was in place. Um, I would definitely say in comparison to the other level of, of the doctors, not to put down the urologists that are out there. They've been trained in, in a procedure and that's the way they go. The, the, um, the key is to have yourself a good urologist that understands his limits and understands that, that the stent, in my personal opinion as a patient, is old school. The reconstruction is far superior technology. It's far superior science, and in comparison, it's night and day. It would be like a miracle compared to where I was to where I am right now. You know, I was able to have a child. I was, you know, I'm able to urinate when I have to and lead a normal life. Where before I was going to the hospital every two or three months. Don't know if I'd have been able to have a child. So. Dr. Gellman is a miracle worker.